she ends up with Okay, maybe I shouldn't say that. No, I, I won't give spoilers. I won't give spoilers. Hello, and welcome back to another vintage inspired video. Before we go any further, I wanted to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. No matter what you choose to do to celebrate or perhaps not celebrate, I hope you have a lovely day. I am using the holiday as a good excuse to launch a new series that I am calling the Classic Cinema Cocktail Club. It is exactly as it sounds. As a lover of old Hollywood and craft cocktails, I will be pairing the two together to create a cocktail directly inspired by the classic film that we're looking at. For today's inaugural video, we will be taking our inspiration from 1954's Sabrina. This video is about creating a cocktail. I also want it to be an opportunity to share some info about the classic films that I love. Think of it like a TCM, but we make a cocktail at the end of this. And I'm hoping that you also love, and I'm thinking if you're here watching this, you do love them as well. And in that case, it would be super swell if you would hit the like button and subscribe so you can always know when there's more content just like this. I love the creative challenge of pulling elements out of a film to create a cocktail with. For Sabrina, they're on Long Island, so I thought Long Island iced tea. They're drinking champagne, so I thought champagne cocktail. And then there's Sabrina's literal transformation from a caterpillar into a butterfly. So then I thought butterfly pea flower, which if you've ever had a cocktail that changed colors from a dark blue to a lightish pink purple color with the addition of some citrus, that is because it had butterfly pea flower in it. I have Empress Gin and this already contains butterfly pea flower. So this is going to be in a very small way the representation of Sabrina's transformation from caterpillar to butterfly. Sabrina, 1954, directed by Billy Wilder, who is credited with directing some of the most classic films of the old Hollywood era. I mean, there's Double Indemnity, Sunset Boulevard, Some Like It Hot, The Seven Year Itch, Love in the Afternoon, The Apartment. If you haven't seen any of those, add them to your watch list. And of those, I would say what you should start with is Sabrina, since that's what we're here talking about. The film starred William Holden, Audrey Hepburn, and her second ever starring film role right on the heels of winning Best Actress for Roman Holiday, and my man, Humphrey Bogart. And is the story of Sabrina Fair. I think this was based on a play called Sabrina Fair. Her character in the movie is Sabrina Fairchild. So, Sabrina Fairchild is the daughter of the chauffeur to the Larrabee family. And growing up, she always was next door watching longingly at David Larrabee, who never even knew she existed. That was until she decided she needed to break free of the spell that he had on her. And she goes to Paris, she does culinary school, she becomes a mature young woman, and she comes back and wouldn't you know it, David Larrabee recognized, well, he doesn't recognize her. Now David Larrabee takes notice of her. She is waiting at the train station for her father to come and pick her up. Along comes William Holden as David Larrabee slams on the brakes, goes in reverse and says, hello. And she says, hello, how are you? Knowing who he is. And he says, basically, who are you? And she says, who am I? That's not a good Audrey impersonation. Hello, how are you? Well, I'm fine. How are you? And I might add, who are you? Who am I? Am I supposed to know? Come to think of it, no, you're not supposed to know. There becomes a bit of a love triangle between William Holden, Audrey Hepburn, and Humphrey Bogart. And Humphrey Bogart himself had some qualms about the love interest with Audrey Hepburn. He had wanted his... Well, that's interesting. He had wanted his actual wife, Lauren Bacall, to play the role. And that he was concerned about the on-screen perception of him going after a younger woman, but in the real world, he was married to a woman who was only five years older than Audrey Hepburn. And I, I don't know if they had the best chemistry, actually. Him and Lauren Bacall, though, ooh, chemistry off the charts, which makes sense that they got married after they first started together into Have and Have Not and were together until his death. I digress. That is for a different Classic Cinema Cocktail Club episode. I won't tell you what happens. I don't want to ruin it for you. I will leave it at there is a love triangle. Go watch it. There's some drama with who's credited for what on the film. The hardest working woman in show business at the time, Edith Head, is credited as the costume designer for the film. There's a famous story about 
Audrey Hepburn being sent to meet with Givenchy in Paris to hand select items for Sabrina to wear when she comes back from Paris. As the story goes, he expects to be meeting with Catherine Hepburn, who is by 1954 a very established actor in old Hollywood. And he finds, no, it's not Catherine Hepburn, it is somebody he'd never heard of before named Audrey Hepburn. They have this appointment that led to them working on, I believe, eight films together, resulting in some of the most amazing fashion moments in film history. And Edith Head ends up, at the end of this, winning the Academy Award for Best Costume Designer, without any mention to Givenchy and his contributions to the film. Needless to say, everything she wore in the film was flawless. That's it for the film history portion of this video, which brings us now to the cocktail portion. So what are we making? We're making what I am calling a Moonlight Sonata Sour. And what a sour is, is a drink with a base liquor, a citrus, and simple syrup, and oftentimes egg whites. I'm gonna be using the gin, I already mentioned, lemons, and orgeat, which don't come for me. I know some people say orgeat, some people say orgeat, some people maybe say it different than that, but I was at a tiki bar the other day and they said orgeat. But that is what we're gonna go with. We're gonna start building the drink. So I need to cut this lemon, let's see. We're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And then two ounces of gin. Or jat. This one that I'm using is by Small Hand Foods. I do a quarter ounce of the orgeat. I don't really like sweet drinks, but if you do, you can up that to half an ounce. And you can also use a simple syrup, which is usually the most common when it comes to sours, or you can use an agave as well. Next ingredient we're gonna add is rose water. This is a very strong ingredient. I have made the mistake of putting a half ounce or maybe even more into a drink once before I knew how strong this was and it'll ruin your drink. It'll taste like you're drinking a candle. This has a stopper on it that has a small opening. So we're gonna do dashes. I'm gonna do three dashes. Was that three? Let's go with that. I think it's better to use a light hand when using this ingredient. That's gonna bring us to our egg white. We're gonna add that and then we're gonna dry shake it and then we're gonna add ice, shake it again. Mmm, I just realized my champagne is warm. Oops, I had this really pretty bottle that has hearts on it that I got for a photo shoot last year, and I thought the bottle was too pretty, so I've never opened it. I used it just as decoration in our bar. I should probably drink it, but I'm gonna use this little one that my mom gave me for Valentine's Day. This is by a company that created this glassware inspired by Audrey Hepburn herself. The tall, slender, elegant lines of this glass are very reminiscent of Audrey Hepburn, so I thought I had to use that for this, right? Now we give it our dry shake. This is to get the egg all nice and emulsified. Don't do what I did. Chill your champagne before you serve it. Also, a chilled coupe glass would have been a good idea as well. Didn't do that. Oops. Ooh. Ooh, she's very cool. It looks very pretty though. I'm going to put this flower from our garden in it. It matches, luckily, because this is the only flower we currently have in our garden. I'm gonna add a couple drops of this aromatic walnut bitters. I think that it turned out really beautifully, but we need to taste it and see how we did. It is sour, which is good because that's what we were going for. So check on, was our sour sour? Yes, it was. Let's take another. That's good. I don't get the rose water. But like I said, I was afraid of overdoing it. Three dashes is what I was, I feel like I have foam. Three dashes is what I was going for. I think it ended up being a little, maybe two and a half. Maybe you could push it to four and still be okay. Gin, obviously a very botanical liquor. It has a very dry mouth feel. I'm okay with that. I do not like sweet drinks really at all. 
if you do, add a little bit more of the syrup, agave, or orgeat. And my mom just so happened to buy me a champagne that was a brute champagne, which means it was on the less sweet side, which was great for what I was doing here. But if you want to have a sweeter drink, then look for something that says dry on it, then you will add a lot more sweetness to the drink overall. I think that this is a very drinkable drink and that's the case usually with champagne cocktails. They are good and bad because they're very drinkable, but bad because you don't realize how strong they are. The good thing about this one, it's just gin and champagne. Some other champagne cocktails call for additional liqueurs or other liquors and so then it just ups how strong they are. If you're looking for a champagne cocktail that is more than just a mimosa, I recommend you make this one. I recommend you also watch Sabrina. Let me know if you do one or the other or both in the comments. And if you make this, let me know what you think about it. Until that next video, I'm wishing you a super swell day and I will see you again on another episode of Classic Cinema Cocktail Club. But really, I have all kinds of other vintage inspired videos coming, not just all like this one, all types of vintage things. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe so you don't miss those and I will see you then, bye. That was weird. And fourth, whoa, from a butterfly to a caterpillar. <clears throat> Hello, how are you? That was a terrible Audrey impression. That was terrible. Yeah, I think that's it, right?